Vertical dimension, understanding the concept. Jaw relation is recorded to measure the extensibility and the movements permissible by the patient's temporomandibular joint. To achieve this goal, the recording must include an approximate vertical dimension of occlusion, stable occlusal contacts in harmony with the existing TMJ and masticatory muscle functions. Jaw relation is defined as any relation of the mandible to the maxilla. It includes orientation jaw relation, which is the jaw relation when the mandible is kept in its most posterior position, horizontal jaw relation, which is the relationship of the mandible to the maxilla in a horizontal plane, or the relationship of the mandible to the maxilla in the anterior posterior direction, and vertical jaw relation, which is the length of the face as determined by the amount of separation of the jaws. So let's focus on vertical jaw relation. Vertical jaw relation is the amount of separation between the maxilla and mandible in a frontal plane. This record provides the optimal separation between the maxilla and the mandible. And if this record is not measured accurately, the joint will be strained. It will be overextended or underextended. Now there are a few terms which we need to understand before we go into detail about vertical jaw relation. So these terms are vertical dimension of occlusion and vertical dimension at rest and freeway space. So vertical dimension at occlusion is the length of the face when the teeth or the occlusal rims or the central bearing points or any other stop are in contact and the mandible is in centric relation or the teeth are in centric relation. VDO is a constant point and it can be maintained for indefinite time. Whereas vertical dimension of rest is the length of the face when the mandible is in rest position. This position of the mandible is in relation to the maxilla when the maxillofacial musculature are in a state of tonic equilibrium. The difference between VDR and VDO that is vertical dimension at rest and vertical dimension at occlusion is known as the freeway space that is vertical dimension at rest is equal to vertical dimension at occlusion plus the freeway space. Freeway space or interocclusal rest space it was first studied by Dr. M. A. Nismunja. It ranges from 2 to 4 millimeters in vertical direction at the position of the first premolar. Now the basic principle governing vertical jaw relation is the mandible to maxilla relationship established by the repetitive contracted length of the elevator muscle determines the vertical dimension of occlusion. So the most important thing to understand about vertical dimension is that the mandible goes repetitiously to the position dictated by the contracted elevator muscles, predominantly the masseter. The upper and lower teeth erupt into the space until they meet at the jaw-to-jaw -jaw relationship. Thus, the repetitive contracted length during the pass cycle of the elevator muscles sets the jaw-to-jaw -jaw relationship to which the teeth erupt. Now, the second important aspect of vertical dimension that must be understood is that the vertical position of each tooth is adaptable to the space provided, not vice versa and that the capacity of the teeth to erupt or intrude is present throughout life. So there is an ever-present eruptive force that causes teeth to erupt until they meet at an equal opposite force. So if the opposing force is greater than the eruptive force, the teeth are intruded until the eruptive force equals the resistive force against them or if the resistive force is less than the eruptive force, the teeth will continue to erupt. The vertical dimension of occlusion, VDO, refers to the vertical position of the mandible in relation to the maxilla when the upper and lower teeth are intercuspated at the most closed position. Even though the video occurs when the teeth are fully articulated, the teeth are not the determinants of vertical dimension. Rather, their position is determined by the vertical dimension of the space available between the fixed maxilla and the muscle positioned mandible. So the muscle that is, the elevator muscle is the guiding force determining the vertical dimension of occlusion. Now the muscle determined vertical dimension of occlusion must be measured from origin to insertion of masseter muscle. This is best measured clinically from the zygoma to the angle of the mandible, that is the origin to insertion dimension of the masseter muscle. Now if there are no deflective occlusal interferences that require downward displacement of the TMJs from centric relation to achieve maximum intercuspation, the vertical dimension in the anterior region it will remain constant 
whereas if you increase the vertical dimension then it will revert back to this dimension at the anterior teeth as the muscles close the bite back to where it was so this position can vary depending on the condylar position so now let's take a look at how the condyle position affects vertical dimension if the vertical dimension of the anterior face at A is achieved by downward forward displacement of the condyles from centric relation, it is at this jaw relation that muscle length B establishes the VDO. So A is the VDO whereas B is the zygoma mandible distance. The front of the mandible moves upward as the condyles move down and the pivot point is usually at the most distal tooth. Whereas, when the condyles are seated up into centric relation, the vertical dimension at the front is increased because the condyles move upward, so the muscle length at B, that is the distance from zygoma to mandible, it decreases, it shortens, and this permits an increase in vertical dimension at A. Note here that this increase in vertical dimension has occurred without lengthening the muscles at B. So if we need to increase the vertical dimension, it can be increased so that the repetitive muscle contraction is not affected. Otherwise, the vertical dimension won't be stable. Now let's take a look at another related terminology, physiological rest position. It is the mandibular position assumed when the head is in an upright position and the involved muscles particularly the elevator and depressor groups are in equilibrium in tonic contraction and the condyles are in a neutral unstrained position. This position most commonly results in a separation of the maxillary and mandibular teeth of about 3 mm at the first premolar region termed as the interclusal space which is the difference between the VDR that is vertical dimension at rest and VDO that is vertical dimension at occlusion. The significance of physiological rest position is that it is a bone to bone relation which remains fairly constant throughout the life in absence of any pathosis. The vertical dimension at rest should be recorded at the physiological rest position of the mandible. So at present no one method is valid for determining the vertical dimension at rest which can be used for all patients. So, incorrect measurement of the rest position can lead to faulty recording of the vertical dimension at occlusion and it can lead to injury to the supporting structures and the temporomandibular joint. So, it is fairly important to record the VDR accurately. The following methods can be used to measure the vertical dimension at rest such as facial measurements after swallowing and relaxing. So, the patient is asked to sit upright and relax Two reference points are marked with the help of a triangular piece of adhesive tape on the tip of the nose and the tip of the chin. And then the patient is asked to perform functional movements like wetting his lips and swallowing. So this will bring the mandible in its physiological rest position before going to its habitual rest position. And then you measure the distance between the two reference points which gives the measurement of the physiological rest position. Another method is tactile sensation. So the patient is asked to stand erect and open his mouth wide till he feels discomfort in his muscles of mastication. Next, the patient is asked to close his mouth slowly. The patient is instructed to stop closing when he or she feels that his or her muscles are totally relaxed and comfortable. And then you need to measure the distance between the two reference points. Another method is based on the anatomical landmarks. So the distance between the pupil of the eye and the rima oris, that is the corners of the mouth, which is measured as A, and B is measured as the distance between the anterior nasal spine and the lower border of the mandible. So these measurements are taken as A and B using Willis guide. If both these distances are equal, so the jaws are considered at rest. The next method is recording VDR with the help of speech. So the patient is asked to repeatedly pronounce the letter M a certain number of times and the distance between the two reference points is measured immediately after the patient stops. So the same reference points that we talked about in the tactile sensation part. Another method being based on facial expressions of the patient. So you can look for the skin around the eyes and the chin which should be relaxed. 
the nostrils should be relaxed and breathing should be unobstructed the upper and lower lips should have a slight contact in a single plane so if the mandible is protruded the lower lip will be in front and without contact and if the mandible is retruded then the upper lip will be in front now let's take a look at the methods for recording video the vertical dimension at occlusion so broadly the methods can be divided into mechanical methods and physiological methods mechanical methods these are called so because they do not require any functional movement like for example ridge relations so the distance from the incisive papilla to mandibular incisors is used as a stable landmark because incisive papilla does not change a lot with the resorption of the alveolar ridge so the distance of the papilla to the maxillary incisal edge is 6 mm usually the vertical overlap between the upper and lower incisors is 2 mm that is the overbite so automatically the distance between the incisive papilla and the lower incisors will be approximately 4 mm so based on this value the vertical dimension at occlusion ca can be calculated another method of ridge relation is ridge parallelism so the mandible is parallel to the maxilla only at occlusion so this factor can be used to determine the vertical dimension at occlusion the mandible of the patient is adjusted to be parallel to the maxilla which is associated with a 5 degree opening of the jaw so that the tmj gets a correct amount of jaw separation pre extraction records such as file silhouettes so an accurate silhouette is made with cardboard or contoured with wire using the patient's photograph it can be used as a template so since the silhouette is taken from a pre extraction photograph so it shows the vertical dimension at rest it is positioned on the patient's face while recording the vertical dimension at occlusion the chin should be at least 2 mm above the level of the lower border of the silhouette Another pre-extraction record that can be used is radiographs. Cephalometric profile radiographs and radiographs of the condylar fossa are used to determine the vertical jaw relation, but their use is limited due to the inaccuracy in the technique. Measurements can also be taken from former dentures. So if the patient's existing denture is available you can use that a bolis gauge is used to measure the distance between the border of the maxillary and the mandibular denture when both these dentures are in occlusion articulated cast so when the patient is dentulous then the maxillary cast is mounted in the articulator using a face bow transfer and finally the profile photographs before extraction they should be taken in maximum occlusion as the patient can easily maintain this position during photographic procedures now next moving on to the physiological methods for recording video using wax occlusal rims so first establish vdr and the difference between the reference points that is between the nose and the chin is recorded So then make the interocclusal distance approximately 3 to 4 mm less than the interocclusal distance at rest position. Thinly coat the maxillary occlusal rim with petrolatum. Soften a roll of base plate wax in a water bath at 130 degree Fahrenheit and contour it in a triangular shape with the base on the occlusal rim and attach it to the occlusal surface of the mandibular occlusal rim. Then seat the mandibular record base in the mouth of the patient. and assure that the record base is stable when the jaw is moved then ask the patient to retrude the mandible and close on the back teeth allow the wax to harden before removing the tentative record from the mouth another physiological method for recording video is nesswinger and thompson's method which was given in 1934 The patient is asked to sit upright with his head unsupported and the eyes looking straight. When the relaxation is obvious, the lips are carefully parted to reveal the space present between the occlusal ribs, which is the freeway space. The formula VDR is equal to VDO plus freeway space can be used to evaluate the vertical dimension at occlusion. Another common method is Silverman's closest speaking space. 
So when sounds like sh, s, j are pronounced, the upper and lower teeth reach their closest relation without contact. This minimal amount of space between the upper and lower teeth in this position is called the silverman's closest speaking space. So in an ideal case, the lower incisor should almost touch the palatal surface of the upper incisor. Increase in the freeway space between the upper and lower incisors indicates an inadequate vertical dimension at occlusion. A decrease in the closest speaking space will indicate an excessive vertical dimension at occlusion. Contact of the incisal edges during speech also indicates an excessive vertical dimension at occlusion. Another method is given by Pound and Murrell that is the F or V and S speaking anterior tooth relation. So F and V sounds the incisal edges of the maxillary anterior teeth create a seal on the moist area of the vermilion border of the lower lip. Whereas for the S sound the position of the mandibular anterior teeth is determined when the patient says words beginning with S. When the S sounds are articulated the mandible moves forward. The incisal edges of the anterior teeth do not make contact. So these were the various methods for recording vertical dimension. As mentioned previously, the vertical jaw relation is the most critical record because errors in this record produces the first signs of discomfort. So the effects of altered vertical dimension are when the vertical dimension is increased, there is trauma and pain under the basal seat areas of dentures. Due to continuous pressure on the residual alveolar ridge, it undergoes rapid resorption. Muscular fatigue of any one or group of muscles of mastication leads to loss of freeway space. When occlusal vertical dimension is increased, opposing cusps will frequently meet each other producing an embarrassing clicking sound. Elongated appearance and at rest, the lips are parted. Patient tries to close them together producing an expression of strain. And because there is no space present between the teeth in denture, it may result in generalized hyperemia. The effects of decreased vertical dimension are masticatory inefficiency because pressure which is possible to exert with teeth in contact decreases considerably with overclosure, loss of muscle tone as well as reduced vertical height, flabby cheek tend to become trapped between the teeth during mastication leading to cheek, tongue and lip biting. There is loss of lip fullness and muscle tone, angular chelity or pearl lashes. A reduced vertical dimension results in a crease at the corners of the mouth beyond the vermilion border and the deep fold thus form becomes bathed in saliva thus leading to infection and soreness. Overclosure may cause pain in temporomandibular joint probably due to strain of the joint and associated ligaments. So this was about vertical dimension. VDO, VDR, freeway space, the importance of vertical dimension, the principles for vertical dimension, the various methods for recording VDR and VDO, and the effects of increase and decrease in vertical dimension. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.